Hey guys, let's paint a badger from Goon Master using brushes from Chronicle RPG Accessories. Now we've got a badger model here, it's got a standard zenithal highlight. This is where you've got your light colours that come in down from above, and you've got your nice deep shadows underneath it. You do this by undercoating the whole model black, and then giving it a, a kind of angled prime grey going down across it and from a, the angle I've just shown you there and then you hit it with white directly from above and because I'm going to be painting this model using a traditional kind of slap chop style I really want to push those shadows even further and kind of drive those highlights up so I'm going to do this using an oil wash so to begin with I'm going to prime my model, uh, not prime my model, varnish my model with a gloss varnish this will always help with the uh, removal of the oil paint later, which we're going to see. As you'll see, we're not, you know, doing anything fancy here. I'm literally just covering the entire model in gloss varnish. Now I'm going to take a uh, odorless spirit, a small tin palette, steel palette, I don't know, and some black oil paint. And to start things off, I'm going to use my number four wolf brush. And don't worry, we are going to give it a really good clean later as well. So we're just going to take the tiniest little splodge of the oil. We're just literally going to little squeeze and scrape off the top. Pop that down into my palette. Now adding a few splashes of odorless spirit. Nice that we've got a, a consistency that is almost all spirit with a, a little bit of the black oil paint. No exact measurements or science here. Then we're just going to give it a really, really good and a really thorough mix up. Now this isn't especially kind to the brush and I'm going to give it a good cleanse after we're done here. And one of the reasons why I'm using a size 4 for this is that exact reason. I'm not too fussed about the, the the point remaining super sharp on my size 4 or I can really use it for this workhorse sort of stuff. So now what we're going to do, we're literally just going to apply this straight onto the model and the uh, consistency of this wash means it will really readily apply. Like I think you just saw it there run down behind his ear and straight into the, the crevices and what you're going to want to do is cover the entire thing in this shade wash. I mean don't let it pull too deep anywhere. When you're done you'll have a little chappy that looks a little bit like this. Completely shaded now very grey. I'm going to set them aside for 20 minutes to dry and I'm going to wash my brush because as you can see and as I mentioned earlier I have abused it. So we're again just going to take a little splash of odorless spirit, pop it in a clean tin. and then give our brush a really good rinse. Really rinse it off and we're gonna test it on the side, see that it's running clear and give it a real good, good kind of bathe in this spirit. And then we're gonna wash the recess out in some water. This is gonna write off this pot of water. So I'll get that cleaned out before I carry on with any painting. And then I'm gonna use my Chronicle Vegan Brush Soap and using a pull in motion, really kind of condition those bristles, give it a really nice treatment and you see, clear out most of the mess. Now, 20 minutes or so later, my badger's ready to remove some of that oil paint. So we're going to grab some eyeshadow sponges. Some of that odor, odorless spirit again. Just a tiny little splodge in the cap. And then using a, a clean sponge, I'm going to pop this in there. Just, just a little dab. You get it all soaked into one side. Then flipping it using the other side of that sponge. I'm just going to drag it across the model and you'll see straight away this is instantly pulling all of that shade off of those top layers bringing it back up to those original tones but leaving the shadowy wash and all of those darkest recesses I do spend a little bit more attention and focus on his face just because there's going to be white patches on his face so I want that brought up a bit and that's him recess shaded now we're going to leave him to dry as I've done here overnight we're not going to want to apply any paint at all while there's any wet 
oil. And to start with, we're going to use some warp lightning and some contrast medium. And this is basically the principle you're going to see going forward. Uh, a 50-50 mix of almost all my contrast paints with a contrast medium. I'm using a size 3 now. And I'm using the size 3 for this big fat belly this brush has. It's going to be able to hold a really nice amount of the contrast uh, paint glaze mix we're going to apply over our ale badger. So and you'll see here in the background I've got just a ceramic tile. Um, when I'm doing this sort of technique I use this sort of palette. Um, you don't want anything absorbent like a wet palette when you're using your contrast paints um, as they can dilute far too much um, or stain and just cause all sorts of a mess. So here I'm just going to mix my 50-50 mix, draw a nice amount of that up into the belly of my brush. And then apply that readily over his shawl, his little uh, hood, this, this top bit of the model we've got here. And I'm going to watch out for it pooling anywhere, but as you can see I've got a, a nice amount of paint in my brush. The sables hold a, a fantastic amount of paint. I find the size 3 perfect for this sort of work. It's actually one of my go-tos. I mean, I'm also going to apply this mix to the top half of his sleeve. Imagine that this and his um, hood is all one piece. Now what I'm doing is with the same mix, just applying a, a coat over the top of that one, just to bring up the saturation of the colour. Um, the first layer though, I've ensured that the bottom layer dried all the way. When you're done, you'll end up with a little shawl looking like this, which has some really nice natural highlights and some really nice dark punchy lowlights. Same principle, but now with Talisar Blue Contrast, 50-50 mix, and we're going to work on his sleeves with this. And you'll notice me do something slightly different, because his sleeves have the kind of slashed, striped kind of detail built into them. What I'm going to do is give the first coat all over the sleeve. Sorry, my camera refused to focus, there we go. First, all over the sleeve. And then when I go around for the second coat, I'm only actually going to apply this one to every other stripe. This will create a good kind of variation in the colour um, and give it saturation where you need it while keeping the, the pattern and the detail held in the modeler. And there we go, your badger has a sleeve. And two sleeves, obviously. Now what we're going to work on is his little leather jacket. And what I've done here is the exact same principle, but with a 50-50 mix of Plague Bearer Flesh and Contrast Medium. And once again I'll do the exact same thing, where I go over this twice to, you know, capture the hue of the colour but give it a really nice saturation. I'm using predominantly Games Workshop Contrast Medium paints on this paint job, but you could do the exact same thing with any inks or any speed paints from any of the, the big brands like Army Paint or Vallejo. Everybody has their own uh, speed paint. I'm applying this to the belt as well. Um, this will be gone over with a, a brown later, but this creates a nice foundation for that colour as well. And here we go, here I'm applying my second coat of that Plague Bearer Flesh kind of greeny yellow um, contrast colour. And that's giving his little jerkin this nice little hue here. Then we're going to take a brown contrast medium, Garak Sewage, Garak Sewage, I'm not entirely sure on the pronunciation. And we're going to apply this to all the leather colours following the exact same principles we've done on the model so far. So we've mixed our colour down with contrast medium, and we're just going round and giving it all 
two even coats and obviously remember as I mentioned two or three times let the first coat dry all the way before the second coat if you pull wet contrast paint away from itself when it's like semi dry when it's gone tacky you end up with blotch stains which for this painting technique are almost completely unrepairable without going all the way back to the starting point and catching back up with yourself He's starting to come together quite nicely, his outfit's taking peace, but I've decided this little green skirt I think should match his tunic, so I'm just going back in and applying the same principle we did for his hood and his top sleeve, just going around using that 50-50 warp stone contrast medium to just fill in his skirt. And for this stripe that he's got along the, the center of his skirt, we're going to pick that out with bow red contrast paint. Exact same principle, we're going to thin it down, we're going to apply it in two thin coats across this stripe. Um, it doesn't matter that we've got the green underneath it, as green actually makes quite a nice base coat for, for reds anyway. A um, little bit of color theory for you there, but it creates quite a natural shadow for the red, um, as your, your deepest points are going to end up looking brown. There we go. So now we're going to move away from our contrast paint and we're going to use a shade paint, Agrax Earthshade, and we're using this straight out of the pot. So no medium or thinner or anything. And we're just giving his little tankard a wash of this. Now again, uh, I'm using a Citadel colour here. Any brown wash would be absolutely perfect. Both Vallejo and Army Painter do some great browns. Now I'm just going to pick out the, the wrapping on his hilt. We're doing this with Skeleton Horde and Contrast Medium. Notice the pattern and this will uh, pick up those wraps just on his hilt. Okay, now we're going to take Black Legion, we're going to start to paint the Badger for the first time. And again, exact same principle, this isn't fresh from the pot, this has been thinned with contrast medium. And we're just going to pick out the areas of our Badger that should be in deep shadow. So, for instance, his ears. I'll just get you back into shot there, there we go. So his face little patches, his ears, around his eyes. We're going to do his paws, the bottom half of his tail. And we're just going to apply this in two thinned coats. And as you can see, it's picking up those hair strands really nicely. And this is really helped by the work we did earlier with the oil wash. As I worked on this for reference, I found myself Googling um, cartoon badgers to see what a, a good little badger should look like. And the whole world decided that badgers look differently to each other. So I then just googled actual badgers and looked at what they should look like. 
and it reminded me of my favourite childhood show, Animals of Farthing Wood. If you've not seen that or read the book, I recommend it, but it's not for the light of heart. So now we're going to take an acrylic colour, not a wash, a standard white. Um, any white will do. I think uh, Monument Hobbies bold titanium white is the best white on the market. And you also just saw me use a wet palette there. And that was because I wanted to thin this down and control its consistency to really um, be able to apply it to the model nice and smoothly and be able to do it in two or three coats to get a nice punchy white on his face without losing that legwork we did with all of our pre-shading. And as you can see there, our badger is already looking a lot more badgerly. I want to just re-highlight and reshade some of his face cheeks. So I'm going to uh, dilute down some whitewash, soul blight grey I think it's called. And this is just going to put some, some white into those depths. And I'm still uh, using the same brush I've been using. Um, this is actually a size 2. I'm just going to make sure I'm pulling it where I need it to be. Don't let it pool anywhere. You just saw me like pull it out from behind his ear like pick it up and use this to blend it down and just really sell the white on his face and now we're going to take a mid grey colour and I'm just going to paint his breeches and I've actually been leaving these because I wasn't quite sure what colour I wanted them to be and I was waiting until the rest of the model had been painted in a much more uh, to complete kind of way so I could be informed by the palette um, I'm going to use uh, the, the same sort of method we've used before, but due to the, the nature of Xenophil highlighting, um, the breeches have been left without any white on them. So I'm just applying this grey as kind of a base coat to be able to apply shades to later. And that's what I'm doing here. This is me applying a dark green wash, uh, Dark Angels Green Contrast, if you wanted to like, like duplicate using the exact same method. And now it's time to get a lot more finickety, so you've just seen me swap down to the size 1 brush um, using this for its its point. I've controlled the fluidity of my paint uh, with the wet palette over there. I'm just cautiously painting his eyes. Um, a tip for pupils, always go bigger. Um, a nice big pupil is a lot easier to sell and reads better than a tiny diddy little one. So there we've got his eyes sketched in. Now with a triple zero Wolfair, I love this brush just for its sharpness and its ability to be incredibly technical. I'm just applying a small white blob to both eyes just to sell a little bit of reflection. And this goes a lot better in his right eye than it does his left, but I'm quite happy with how it turns out on both. Now again, using my wet palette to control the um, fluidity I just paint his teeth in with an ivory color and then I give him a wash here of seraphim sapia just to pick out that detail and just make sure that they're highlighted then with a middle silver color we're just gonna go around now I mean, you, you will notice I've swapped back up to my size 1 here this could also be a size 2 and it's for sable I find for this sort of workhorse painting the sables are a brilliant. I mean, I love both. You'll see me flipping back and forward between both throughout all of my painting videos, the Wolfhair and the Sables. But I find the Sables for technical painting, um, just that little bit more, um, they've just got the slight edge on the Wolves. That's not to undersell the Wolves. They're some of the robust brushes, the most robust brushes I have in my collection. We are, as you see, we're just going around, picking out all of his details that we want to make metallic in the silver here, ready to be given some depth and we're going to do this with a grey contrast um, I don't know who the first person was to apply grey contrast paints over metallics but they were a genius um, it's now a, a standard part of my metallic painting no matter what I'm doing do note how much paint I've got on my brush look the colour only comes up halfway up the bristles it's nowhere near the ferrule um, painting this way will really make your brushes live a long long time now we're just going to use some brown shade again, the same one we used earlier, just to give some character to the metal. And to his tankard. And there we go. That's your badger.
There you go, base to taste, and you have yourself a fully painted badger from Goonmaster using the phenomenal brushes from Chronicle RPG Accessories.